Firstly, let's go over the strengths and weaknesses of all three of these CPUs. First, the AMD Ryzen 7 5700X 3D. It's great for gaming. Obviously, that's kind of what this CPU is dedicated for. It is a great budget CPU, especially in comparison to any of the Intel CPUs. It's compatible with the existing AM4 motherboards, but we are gonna be going over this a little bit in, into the video. And it also offers a much lower power consumption than the Intel chips. Weaknesses, it has a lower clock speed, there's limited upgrade pass, and then it is going to require a BIOS update on the older AM4 motherboards, just like you have to do with the 14th generation Intel CPUs because the Z790s have been out for three generations of Intel CPUs. So for the i7-14700K, the strengths for this thing is that it offers excellent all around performance in both gaming and productivity tasks. It also offers a much higher clock speed and core count than the 5700X 3D, which is beneficial for multi-threaded workloads. It also supports the new PCI 5.0 and DDR5 technologies. Forgot to say to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. I hate saying it just as much as you probably hate me saying it, but if I do not say it, like 1% of you will actually do it. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. For weaknesses, it's a lot more than the 5700X 3D. It requires a new LGA 1700 motherboard or one of the older versions of the LGA 1700 motherboards, but you are going to need to update the BIOS in order to use the 14th generation CPUs with those, unless you just get lucky and get one of the brand new motherboards that they've manufactured. And then like all of the 14th generation CPUs, it's a much higher power consumption than AMD's. So for the i9-14900K, I know that this is an extremely unfair comparison, okay, but it's it's the only other CPU that I have at the moment, so that's what we're going to be testing. So strengths, it's top of the line performance, obviously it's the highest end Intel CPU. It has more cores and threads than both the 5700X3D and 14700K, which again is ideal for demanding applications, and then it also supports overclocking for even more performance potential. Weaknesses, it's a lot more, and like, I mean a lot more. So it requires a much higher end cooler because of the higher power consumption and because of the temperatures that this, this thing is going to output. And then, you, but I'm, I'm just guessing that most of you are gonna be getting a 360 millimeter because you're probably like building one of the top of the line computers and I'm, I'm hoping you get an AIO for a 4900K. And then lastly, for, so, the weaknesses were that it was a lot more and then it's going to require a much better cooler and then the last weakness for the 14900k is that it's going to be overkill for most people it really is you know a lot of the applications that are releasing nowadays are really prioritizing graphics cards just because of how powerful they are you know what i mean it's 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 a night and day difference when you go from getting like to be honest even going from a 4080 to a 4090 and using that in applications like blender cinema 4d photoshop after effects premiere pro and all of these like creative quote-unquote applications it is very clear that the 4090 was dedicated for creative people so overall gamers if you're prioritizing pure gaming performance at a reasonable you know value then the 5700x3d is an awesome choice if you want the best possible gaming performance and don't mind the 14700k's extra you know then that's a strong contender and then for the i9 14900k this is really only recommended to i'm just being honest man for people that just want the best of the best it's kind of it really is, unless you are doing creative work it's kind of pointless to have you know, it's, I mean, I'm not saying that the 14700K to the 14900K, there's not going to be any performance increase between these two because yes, there is, but it's, it's so minuscule that like it, it comes down to you. You know what I mean? So as far as productivity, now this is a much different story here. Okay. So the i7-14700K offers the best balance of performance and price to most users. The i9-14900K excels in highly demanding workloads like video editing and 3D rendering, which I explained a little while ago. And then the 5700X 3D falls behind quite a bit in multi-threaded tasks, but it might be suitable for lighter productivity workloads and 
if you pair this with a good graphics card and that is what this is for this is aimed at people who are gaming and now i'm just gonna go on a little personal opinion here okay and i'm just this is just me if you have an am4 motherboard and an am4 computer laying around that's awesome and, and that's what this is that's what this is for you know they, they released this to be it's an old it's not an old it's a new cpu but it's like it's an old cpu um you know am5 has been out for a while now so for them to release an am4 cpu at least to me man i personally would like if i was building a new computer right now or if somebody asked me to build them a computer i would not do this because it doesn't take advantage of the new ddr5 technology and with I'm the, the way tech has been exploding the past like year or two ever since AI was released and Nvidia focusing on AI Intel focusing on AI and AMD is still out there doing their own thing focusing on gaming which is great because a lot of people just want to play games on a computer they don't necessarily want to use all these AI technologies and all of these creative applications and make videos and all of that kind of stuff However, it, it is an older, you're going to need an older motherboard, which isn't going to perform as good as the newer ones. And you're not going to be able to take, take advantage of the new NVMEs, which also make a huge difference in like loading times, browsing files on your computer, etc. You know, this is something that a lot of people, you, you ever watch like videos in the past where a lot of people are like, you, how to boost your PC performance with whatever these three or four applications on your computer you don't need to do this anymore with the newer with the newer part at least i haven't run into this problem at all um and the computer that i have the only thing that i've done is i've upgraded the cpu to the 14900k i've upgraded the aio and i've swapped the gpu from a 4080 to a 4090 so i've just kind of like and it has an msi z790 motherboard in it so other than that, everything has remained the same. The NVMe has remained the same. The RAM has remained the same. The motherboard has remained the same. So like the performance is really the only difference that I have noticed. So the Gen 5 NVMe that I have in my computer, like I don't have to like clean this thing because it's a good NVMe. The, you know what I mean? So like the memory, I to be, to be I, I still don't really exactly understand. I'm just being honest. I just still don't really understand like memory like the specs like the tech technical specs behind it like cl34 40 40 48 i don't i understand the first one the cl30 and the, like that's the timing of the ram and then there's the megahertz the speed of the ram i get those two things but i don't understand like the the three other numbers that come after that and then what those actually do and what whether or not they actually matter you know so um either way got a little bit off topic there the 5700x 3d is a great cpu it's amazing it's it's an awesome cpu absolutely i just think that it's a little bit outdated and if i was you i would get a 7800 or whatever you know i just get one of the new am5 chips i just wanted to include the i9 just just as a reference you know like the difference between everything so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed and hope this helped you make up your mind